Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, and we're back! I am a little bit late with this video, but that's because the actual episode was late to premiere, but here we are to talk about this week's episode of Toilet Bound Hanako-kun, episode 6. But before we get into the video proper, I do, as always, have to give a big thank you to those of you who shared last week's video over on Twitter. At BICVIOLET1, at Hans Kunikita, at Leia Hime, at Chaotic Weeb, at Morgan Boyer Poet, at Ultima Enigma 99, at Sirius 9752, at V. Dorogu, at Nekochan 211, and at FiroTaku845. Thanks so much for sharing last week's video over on Twitter, you guys. And if you too would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Hanako video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet, and then tag me at JoJo Talks Too Much over on Twitter, and I will be sure to shout your name out in next week's video. Okay, so we certainly have some stuff to talk about in this week's episode. Quite a bit happened, but uh, I want to go ahead and talk about three things in particular. I want to talk about the uh, Ko, uh, Yashiro, and Hanako dynamic, because no, I'm not going to say Nene anymore, because you guys all make fun of me in the comments. I'm just trying to say it like the characters in the show. Don't make fun of my Canadian ass accent. Anyway, uh, we got to talk about the trio's dynamic. We got to talk about the 4 p.m. library. And we got to talk about the group trying to win over uh, Suchigamori's uh, Yoroshiro. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the trio's dynamic first because I don't have as much to say about this as I do about the other things. Uh, so I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the trio's um, interesting relationship because uh, I noted this while I was watching that it's likely that the uh, Yashiro and Ko relationship is going to be playing second fiddle for the most part to the Hanako and Yashiro relationship because those two obviously like that's the crux of the show is the relationship between Yashiro and Hanako but I feel like it can't be understated that Ko is very much part of this trio it's it's it is a duo for the most part the show begins with this as a duo but as we see in the opening as well as just the way the story is unfolding Ko is very much an important piece of the puzzle, and I feel like leaving him out sort of does him a disservice. And I genuinely, and, and this is going to cause waves, I genuinely like the Ko and Yashiro ship. I think that relationship is fun and cute, and I like it a lot. Do I like it as much as Yashiro and Hanako? No, <laughs> but I mean, like, that's that, that was going to be a hard sell from the beginning. I do, however think that as much as I ship uh, Hanako and Yashiro to the moon and back, I do think that ultimately it's going to be Ko of the of the two who ends up being like the end game ship, and I'll explain why. See, my reasoning is the way that they're setting up the Hanako-Yashiro relationship, it seems like it's going to end poorly. Not so much like an argument and they break up. No, no, no. I'm saying that just based off who Hanako is and the way that this story is shaping up, I can't see this relationship being anything other than bittersweet. It, it just has that vibe, you know? Now mind you, I am always here for a bittersweet ship. If anything, tragedy makes the ship float that much freer. It is something about tragedy that just does wonders for a ship, especially with me. I don't know why. I just, I like feeling the feels, I guess. But with uh, Ko and Yashiro, the, the biggest thing for me is what I think ultimately how I think the trio's dynamic will quote unquote end. And keep in mind, anime only, speculating about anime only stuff that I have seen. I have only seen the anime, so this is all speculation from me. If you don't care for that, well then skip the next two minutes. But I just want to quickly address that I really think that Ko and Yashiro are going to end up living a life separate from Hanako because Hanako is forced to be stuck at the school. So the tragedy of things is that you, either they, uh, e either they're forced to be in a position where they have to exercise Hanako, which I can see, like maybe they're gonna go supernatural with it. And by supernatural, I mean the TV show, not the force. <laughs> but I mean, like that's in, in the sense that the spirits in the TV show Supernatural, um, spoilers, but uh, spirits like Bobby, um, who, are ultimately good people, but the longer they stick around, the more corrupt they become. Like maybe Ko's brother 
is correct and there is quote unquote no such thing as a good apparition. Maybe there is, but they ultimately all succumb to the same fate, which is sad, but I, I kind of dig that idea. We know that a ghost is beholden to the rumors surrounding them. But I can see some shenanigans happening where they're forced to uh, exercise Hanako for the sake of the school or something like that. Um, but at the same time, like I, I can see that happening and Ko and Yashiro like staying together. Either outcome that I see for the show, either with them being forced to exercise Hanako, or in my opinion, even friggin' sadder is that like they graduate and leave because they have to <laughs> like and they're they're forced to abandon Hanako or maybe maybe they become teachers at the school but even then they would still ultimately have to leave because they would grow old and die and Hanako would still be there and as we know from this episode Hanako chooses to always stay behind to remain there at the school and while I, like listen like that's bittersweet but again I I just kind of have a feeling like Ko and Yashiro the, their dynamics is just perfect. I think their personality is like really like they, they gel well. You know what I mean? I don't ship it as much as I ship Hanako and Yashiro, but I think you know what I'm trying to get at. It just kind of feels like that's where it's going. I mean, at least if I were writing it, that's where I would be leading to. Uh, some people are going to be upset by that. Some people are going to be laughing in manga. I don't know, but that's just my opinion on that. I just wanted to get that out there. The other thing that we have to talk about is the 4 p.m. library. And, okay, so when they go in, I was like, man, this library is very pretty. It, it's a well-put-together library. Nothing spooky about it. Everything seems normal. Checks out A-OK. -okay. Uh, oh, pretty butterflies. That's nice. Oh, the, the book is there. Oh, interesting. Yashiro's reading it. All har har har. She reads a poem. Uh, she reads her own poem that she wrote in her journal. It's about Hanako. So we were right from last week that she is starting to kind of feel some certain kind of way about our boy. I ship it like, like I said earlier, I ship it like FedEx. So I'm all here for that. And then, oh, that's weird. There's more butterflies. And oh, that's weird. The book is friggin' bleeding. <laughs> uh oh, and oh, that's weird. There's a giant <laughs> Yashiro shaped monster. It, it's about to get scary, isn't it? It's about to get spooky. And then it gets spooky. And I dig it. I'm here for it. I love it. And I think the 4BM library is one of the cooler. Uh, boundaries as it's called I, I think it's one of the cooler boundaries we have seen thus far we've only seen two I don't even know what I'm talking about but it, it's I, I ooh, actually you know what I don't know which I like more do I like the Misaki stairs or do I like the 4 p.m. library more I think I would l rather hang out in the 4 p.m. library I feel like there's more ways to die <laughs> in the Misaki stairs so I feel like I'd rather hang out in the 4 p.m. library and if I do it means that I can hang out with my boy, Suchi Gamori. And allow me to say that we are now several weeks into the winter anime season, and unless somebody is escaping my brain, and they could be, I'm dumb, but unless somebody else from another show is escaping my brain, I do believe that we have finally finally gotten ourselves a top tier husbando first top tier husbando of winter my god it took forever but Suchigamori is a top tier husbando oh my god i love him and i claim him he is mine <laughs> i love him to bits I, I think he's fantastic i already love this dude plus he's voiced by the man the myth the legend kenji rosuda who i loved pieces and yeah, it, it took us like weeks upon weeks into winter to get a top tier husbando when usually we're getting husbandos and waifus and ships like right off the top. I gotta say, as much as I'm, I've been enjoying winter and I usually like the slower pace start to a year, it's been pretty slow. <laughs> it's been pretty slow going. And I also just realized that not only is, is Tsuchigamori the first top tier husbando of the winter season, doesn't this also make him the first top tier husbando of the decade? That's that's food for thought right there. Damn, damn, good stuff. Tsuchigamori is like my aesthetic to a T, you know? Like he's sick of these brats, doesn't doesn't even really want to be here. He even says like, this is why I don't like kids. And I'm like, yo, same. <laughs> and the aesthetic he has going on, that's, that I, I love it. I like that he can flip to being like, 
kind of scary, but then like like calm and collected at the same time. And he says he doesn't like kids, but much like me, he says he doesn't, but like, come on, he's not a monster. And like, you just, he has that charm to him. Like you want to see good things for him because he, he's a little bit of a shithead, right? Like he, he likes being a little bit nosy, right? He, he likes getting up in every, everybody's business. He reads everybody's books, stuff like that, so that he can learn more about them. He actually kind of reminds me of another husbando of mine, Rohan Kishibak. Only uh, instead of having a stand, he's a ghost. <laughs> Which I mean, I guess he's his own punching ghost. It's it's interesting. I I, I thought that was that, that was kind of neat because he he basically, like when you think about it, the 4 p.m. library is sort of it it doesn't work exactly the same, but it's sort of uh, heaven's door. E, you know, it, you have the ability to to read people's lives like a book. Uh, the only difference is that you can't write in it. Actually, now that I think about it. What would happen if he were to write in somebody's book? What if he could, like, I, I guess maybe that that's not an option. But that's something, that, that that's interesting. I, I, I'd like to, I, I like to see them, you know, try to address that. Like, what would happen if, like, say, uh, Yashiro, like, wrote in her own book, like, I don't go on that date and nobody ever tells me that my legs are fat again. Which, by the way, stop picking on my girl for crying out loud. And even though my timer is about to go off, I'm going to give myself an extra bit of time. I'm going to give myself, like, another minute to talk about uh, something friggin' huge. That is the absolute bombshell that is not just the backstory to Suchigamori, although I was interested in that, but also the backstory to a certain character, a certain Yugi Amane, a.k.a. Hanako. To say that I had goosebumps doesn't even cut it. My jaw <laughs> hit the floor. I had, like, all the hairs on my arms stood up, and my cup of tea raneth cold, because that's how cold my blood was going, because I was just shocked that we were seeing this. This felt, it almost felt early to be seeing this, but at the same time, like, we're halfway through, so, like, yeah, I, I guess finding out a little bit of, of backstory about Hanako but was due, you know, like, it, it, I'm not against that. And again, it doesn't reveal everything, but it's enough. And you start to kind of, like, get an idea of who Hanako was before he became Hanako, back when he was Yugi. Uh, it's time to do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna be making a lot of those jokes every time they mention his name was Yugi. But, like, yeah, it, you, you get the sense of who he was and this dynamic that he shares with uh, uh, Su uh, Suchigamori. And damn, I, I really, I, I wasn't expecting this. Like, I'm, I'm not playing it up. I was genuinely shocked, guys. Like, this really surprised me. Not only because I just wasn't expecting it in terms of how soon it happened, but how kind of somber he was, even as a kid. It bummed me out. And I hated seeing him, like, all beat up and bruised and stuff. Like, like what was going on, man? Like, I, it's not enough. Because <laughs> now that I have the information... It's like just enough information to keep me going, but at the same time, I'm like, well, now you gotta tell me why he's like this. Like, what, what happened? Does he know? Does he know his own past? Because like, I, I have to assume that he does, but at the same time, like, you, you gotta give me more. <laughs> like, you gotta give me more information. Ah, okay. So with that said, everybody, I'm going to wrap up my thoughts here. I would say that this episode was like a cup of chai tea. It is, it is just like a good cup of tea, and it's even got a little bit of spice. It's got a little bit of spice to it, a little bit of kick. Yeah, this, this episode was like a was definitely like a cup of chai tea. And with that said, that is a wrap on today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then go ahead and hit that like button. Maybe even consider sharing the video around on the internet. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around and see more content from me. And if you do, be sure to click on that bell icon so that you'll know immediately when a new video of mine comes out. And if you want to go above and beyond, then consider checking out our Teespring store and grabbing yourself a mug or checking out our Patreon page, which really helps support the channel. And speaking of our Patreon page, I want to give a big thank you to those of you who support Support the channel over on Patreon. Andrew W, Calvin A, Crowbar of Irony, Daniel G, Digger the Fox, Emily, Ionos, Urza, Ginkotaku, Godzilla Fan, No For Nothing, Maria Teresa, Marshall B, Mirth Mouser, Cell, Shadow Creative, Stephen G, Sakochi, Tristan G, and Veridan. 
A huge thank you to all of you who support this channel over on Patreon, and if you too would like to join the T-Squadron, then be sure to check out the link in the description to check out our Patreon page, and get access to our Patreon-exclusive Discord for as little as a dollar a month. And with all that said, I want to once again thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you have an awesome day, and if you are feeling stressed out today, then you go have yourself a warm cup of tea, and I will talk to you all again real soon.